Hello, welcome once again to the business programme here on Kirkley's Local TV. When we think about the largest employers here in Huddersfield in particular, we naturally sort of think about the council, the NHS and of course the university. Now, the university has a massive impact on the local economy and obviously is a huge business in its own right. But today I'm really interested in trying to explore what else the Huddersfield Univer the University of Huddersfield and the business school in particular has to offer the local community. And so to explore that and to answer any specific questions we've got, I've invited along today Jill Johns, who's the Dean of Huddersfield Business School and also the Professor of Production Economics, mm -hmm. which we'll come on to a little bit later. Okay, yeah. So Jill, thanks ever so much for uh, for the, yeah, the, the, the long journey that you've been on between the university and, uh, and here, yeah, okay. and the studio, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's good to see that you didn't get lost either <laughs> on the way. Um, let's explore a little bit more about the business school in particular, because mm -hmm. um, obviously it's a business program, that's what it we're is. really interested yeah. in. Yeah. How active is the business school in the local community, and mm -hmm. uh, what does it offer? Mm -hmm. Well, um, business engagement in particular, or even engagement with any of the communities that, uh, that we're surrounded by, is absolutely core to our mission and vision. Yeah. So I can confidently say that we are very committed to um, engaging with business, engaging with the communities, um, and supporting and promoting businesses through their own needs and journeys. So we have a lot to offer businesses. Um, so it could be from um, uh, offering a student placement into the right. business, um, right up to offering um, full-scale degree apprenticeships for staff development. So that there's that journey and a whole lot of products and opportunities in between. Or it could be uh, student-led consultancy projects right up to uh, a much longer term uh, knowledge transfer partnership. So it's not a one-size, <coughs> excuse me, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach to business engagement. We have a lot of opportunities to offer, and whatever your business is, I think you'd find something that we could support you with. Yeah, because business, uh, and the business school in particular, sort of mm. covers a wide range of different mm. aspects of business. What are those particularly? Sort of, obviously, we think about sort of management, but yeah. beyond that. So we do a lot of around um, leadership and management training. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of consultancy projects, um, which can be around growth and productivity, or simply find a more finding a more efficient way of operating and making savings for the company. Um, as I say, we do the student pro. Um, placements so students can go in and offer their expertise to the business whatever that might be so we have students from all areas it might be marketing it might be um, data analytics it might be business or business management and, and they can go into the business and offer the specialist skills so they do that placement between their second year and their final year okay um, so there's expertise there and willing hands I suppose yeah. as well isn't it? Yes. It's, it's an extra yeah. body uh, mm. into the business. That's absolutely right. I mean obviously we offer placements uh, across a, a wide range of businesses so for example Cummins regularly takes around six placement students uh, in any one year and gives a variety of opportunities to them but we also have placement students in much smaller scale businesses as well and actually we have um, enterprise placement students and these students look at um, possible start-up in their placement year and then after they graduate they can go back and take up that business and hopefully uh, grow it and contribute to the local community in that respect. Okay. So thinking about sort of undergraduate mm -hmm. opportunities so that's in in business business studies. Business, business management. Um, the pla we actually offer the placement to every single student in the school Anybody yeah. can take a placement. Any student, any undergraduate student can take a placement. So those full year placements are mm. three months, six months? Or they tend to be full year placements. Full year. Okay. Yes. So it's like a sort of thin, thin a, a yes, sandwich that's right. in yeah, that That's right. So they do their first two years of study, they go and do the placement. And I think that's absolutely, uh, you know, it's a really fantastic opportunity for the student as well because they can see how the studies from their first two years connect 
with that work placement mm -hmm. and then they come out from the work placement and then in the third year I, th I think they really have matured and I think they perform better as a consequence of that yeah, experience. It's when they grow up in that respect. It, it, it yeah. is in a way, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the, the conventional mm. academic undergraduate programmes with, mm. with placement opportunities. Yeah. Then we've got the, the, the uh, apprenticeship programmes, haven't we, stuff? Yeah. So that's the first one is an undergraduate one that's, again, that's isn't correct. it? That's correct. So we have a Chartered Manager Degree Apprenticeship, or right. the CMDA, just to cut down the mouthful there. And that's uh, directed at uh, staff in the workplace who haven't yet got managerial experience, but who are aspiring managers. And as you say, it's, um, it's an undergraduate level programme. The um, s member of staff needs to be assured that they can have 20% of, mm. of time away from the workplace to, to do their studying. But it's a really nice way of finding out the academic materials in the classroom and then taking those back into the workplace and making the connections between them. And I'm a great advocate of making those connections because I think the learning helps the workplace and the workplace actually helps the learning as well. How does that work in from a time frame for your point? Is that sort of like one day a week in university it, or is it in, on a block it, basis? At the moment it tends to be one day a week. We're looking at the possibility of making a block because some, some uh, organisations prefer that block exactly. uh, rather yeah. than the one day a week. So we're, we're looking at um, those possibilities. Yeah. And then on top of that there's the master's degree That's as well. That's correct. So we have the senior leader master's degree apprenticeship mm. or the SLMDA. <laughs> so that's I'm glad for... you understand <laughs> these acronyms. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's for um, staff who are who have the managerial experience, but they have aspirations to go, you know, further up in the organisation, and um, that again requires the twenty percent yeah. commitment from the firm. It both these degree apprenticeships are paid for from the company's apprenticeship levy, yeah. um, and so it's a kind of win-win situation. Again, the students. Um, have the, the classroom learning and they take that into the workplace and vice versa. So there's a, there's a lot of work-based assessment around uh, both the degree apprenticeship. And a lot of practical program. project work I yeah. would think as well. Yeah, that's correct. So as you said the advantage for that is it's paid from the apprenticeship levy. It so, is, yes. So the student has no debt. That's correct, yes. And likewise the, yeah. the host organisation yeah. It has no direct payment to it, but it obviously right. is taken out through the level. That's right, and I think, um, so if I can give an example from the, the current cohort, so we, we uh, launched both these degree apprenticeships in uh, September 2018. Um, the SLMDA 2019 cohort, we've got three students from Turberg, who's, uh, that's a company in Elland okay. that makes uh, specialist tractors. And uh, those students in their first term of doing the modules, so they were, you know, they were studying things like strategy, finance, people management, and um, they noticed that they could actually improve the appraisal and staff development process in their own company. They went and told their, their senior bosses that they had some ideas around this and they've been given the go-ahead to develop their ideas and to come back with some proposals and I would hope that ultimately um, you know there might be some implementation from those proposals so there's you know a really good example about how the company can get a, a you know a payback from this staff development really quite quickly. Excellent. Other schemes that you're involved with I think as uh, the uh, Giants event the That's other week right, the, yes. the, the yeah. scrum event that's right. Which so was fascinating, actually. That's right. So the degree apprenticeship is is a very formal kind of staff development approach. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we've got um, we've got a real range of activities that we do, uh, and it isn't a one size fits all. So that's a perfect example. The Giants breakfast briefings. Mm. So that's a, a free event for uh, businesses to attend. Um, and a breakfast, breakfast, as well. breakfast <laughs> is provided, so that's always a bonus, isn't yeah. it? And then there's there's a topic for the, the for the day. We have a, a range of speakers around it, talking about the practicalities of the topic, and we'll always have an academic that gives an academic side to the topic. So I think the the last one was around 
data analytics and improving performance through data analytics and I I've had feedback that it was a very well received well, so it's really um, event. Informative, yes, it? yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll come back to data yeah. in a minute, but I think the other things maybe that the university is involved with, West Yorkshire Consortium of Colleges, That's right. Adventure. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, just to go back to the, the less formal networking events such as the Giants Breakfast Briefings, we've also got what's called the Knowledge Sandwich. So that takes place at a lunchtime with a light lunch. I'm suspecting it might be a sandwich. Mm. And um, anybody can come along to that on a very informal basis. Uh, and again, there's a, a, a short talk around the topic and then discussion around yeah. that as well. So there are, are very informal um, engage, bits of engagement with businesses. And as you say, we've, we've kind of got the, the middle of the road bit as well with Adventure and the West Yorkshire Consortium of Colleges where we're engaging with local businesses, um, supporting them. It can be one-to-one -one support, it can be workshops. In the case of the adventure uh, opportunity, that's specifically aimed at SMEs in the local area that are less than three years old. Mm. And it's uh, aimed at um, upscale, helping them upscale, helping them with growth uh, going forward. And, um, that actually is, is free for qualifying businesses in the local area and we'll be lo launching that in May. Yeah. Um, the West Yorkshire uh, Consortium of Colleges is around um, improving performance, higher performance in the, the workplace. We're going to offer a, a variety of packages, uh, training packages for, for businesses interested in that and again it's for local businesses so and we're going to be launching that at the Kirklees Business Conference which I think is the week after next, March okay, the 18th. March 18th I That's think it correct, is, it's Wednesday yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So we'll be launching that there and uh, lots of information coming out, out about for that. that. That'll be yeah. interesting. Which sort of leads us back to data and it productivity does, yeah, and yeah. okay Dean of uh, what is it again? Well, I'm Professor of Production Pro sorry. Economics. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, yeah. so um, my background is that, um, well, my, my background originally is that actually I, I, when I left school, I went into work at British Aerospace. Right. Uh, I didn't go into academia. I was, I was brought up on a farm. My father owned a small business. It was a family-owned farm. Um, and as you can imagine, higher education was not high on mm. the agenda in a farming family. So I went to work at British Aerospace, but they, it was, um, I went as a commercial apprentice and they sponsored me to university. So you can see some links here mm. as to why mm. I'm so supportive of apprenticeships. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So I can say from personal experience that, you know, making those links between business and academia and vice versa are absolutely crucial. I make those links to this day through my academic work as well and, and, yeah. I, and through the engagement that we do with businesses. So having done my degree, um, I was so intrigued by uh, academic links with business that I then went into research around organisational efficiency. Okay. Um, I, I did my PhD and then I was employed um, as a lecturer 32 years ago and, uh, and progressed through my career from then onwards. <laughs> yeah, a few, a few little diversions along the yeah. way, having three children um, and taking time out for, for family reasons and then a number of fractional contracts. Um, before becoming full time, and, and then moving over to Huddersfield I was as say moving to the professor. Right side of the Pennines. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm wearing red for a reason, um, yeah. and I became professor of, of production economics, economics at Huddersfield, and then within a couple of years became dean. But I, I, I like to think that. You know, I, I actually fit in very well at Huddersfield. I think the, the students here tend to be uh, first generation uh, going into higher education, which yeah. is my background as well. The, the ethos of engaging with business, of trying to improve productivity in, in business, I think fits uh, perfectly well with my background and with my research interests as well. Um, a, a lot of my applied research actually is around public sector organisations and trying to improve uh, efficiency in public sector organisations. You obviously like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a data freak, so to yeah. come back to your 
um, your earlier point about data and data analytics, I really like the data side and analysing the data and looking at what it shows us and finding benchma benchmarks for companies. So who, who should they emulate in order to become efficient? Who are the, the, uh, the, the ones that they should imitate? It's the old statement, isn't it? You can only manage what you can measure, but knowing what to measure and how it to manage is, it is it, it, the that's challenge. That's the real challenge, yeah. 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 Well, that's been a fascinating discussion. Thanks mm. ever so much for joining us today. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking me. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the Business Programme here on Kirkley's Local TV.